Hi there, my name's Lee and welcome to Bedtime Stories Corp Adventures. Yes, it's my French trip of the year. Where am I fishing? I'm out at Creek Lakes. What am I doing? I'm having a quick walk around. We've been given one hour. Have a look around the complex, see if we can see any signs of any showing corp. Well, currently at the moment, I haven't seen anything, but I'm going to be heading back to the lodge in the next half an hour. Go do the draw. And if you've ever been to Creek Lakes before, you'll know it's all about the draw. That's the draw done. We had 17 people in front of us. Not a fantastic draw, but not too bad. I am on Lake 2. I'm not fishing the peg I wanted, but I am in my third choice, which is peg 18. There's also good news as well. Lenny's back, fully recovered, had a long holiday and I was so worried about it. If I'd have known that his legs grew back, just like Deadpool's, I wouldn't have been so stressed. But yeah, a talent that leprechauns have, apparently they're invincible. So, welcome back Lenny, let's get him in pride and place, on the rods, where he belongs, literally back on his feet. That's Lenny back on the rods, and he's looking fantastic. Rod's out and on the spots. Happy with him. Bit weedy this lake too this time now. Uh, so yeah, managed to find some clear spots with the marker float. And I'm happy with those. So we'll see how it goes. Now, ideally, I want it to be in peg 14. But that went really early. And the reason I wanted to be in peg 14 was because the guy in there previously was smashing it and had over 20 odd carp out so you know an absolute banging week um the winds picked up sadly it's a real cold wind blowing rides at me and i think the carp are on the back of it so i'll just have to cross my fingers and see how it goes i'm not really going to rush into it i'm going to get the bivy set up and get the kettle on that's the bivy all set up and the bivy I'm using on this session is the Pro Logic Two Man Avenger. The reason I'm using the Two Man Avenger is because Vicky, who misses, she's out fishing this week as a guest, and we needed plenty of space. Yes, there is plenty of space. Vicky's got a single bed chair on the left side there, and on the right side there is a Nash Wide Boy Z bed. That's mine, and as you can see, plenty of space inside the baby for a baby table and loads of room underneath for all your bags. The bait I'm using on this session is 18 mil mainline sal boilies. I'm chopping them in half and that way they last a bit longer. I'm also adding into the mix 10 mil essential sal just to add a little bit of colour into the mix but we'll get back to that in a minute. The final thing I'm adding into the mix is some mainline smart liquid sal flavour. This boosts all of the boilies and adds a liquid cloud attraction in the water, drawing the carp into your area. A quick stir, that's that done. There you go. So let's show you the rigs I'm using on this session. This is the rig I'm using on all three rods at the moment. It's a size six wide gape hook set up as a Ronnie rig with a 50 mil mainline pineapple pop-up on a five inch stiff boom section and it's a Halley safe leader system so set up helicopter style saw me throw in the 10 mil essential sal boilies into the main bait mix i'm using the reason i've done that is because i'm using a yellow 50 mil mainline pop-up and that extra bit of color in the main bait mix matches my pop-up and it'll keep the carp guessing which one's a freebie and which one's my hoop bait I've had the rods out for about four hours, but it's time to reel them in and go down for tea. Today's flown by. And the first meal of the week is cottage pie a petit pois. Okay, six o'clock, rods are out. Tea was absolutely delicious. Cottage pie with the peas and a sponge cake and custard for dessert. Dessert is always my favourite bit. Anyway, as I mentioned, the rods are out back in the bivvy. I'm sitting in the bivvy because there's a really cold wind blowing straight at me mush at the moment. And yeah, a chilly one. So I'm not expecting much to happen straight away. But you never know. Fingers crossed, time will tell. Just coming up to 10 to 10. 
give you a quick update of what happened after tea. Well, we had a few rain showers, and as you can see, there's been no carp landed. It's quite dry at the moment. Been a breezy day, not too bad. But I haven't seen any carp showing or revealing anything, not giving nothing away at the moment. So I'm sticking to the spots that I found earlier, but I'm going to get in my bed and get some zeds. I am absolutely spent. After five hours kip, And there we go, first run of the trip, 10 to 3 Sunday morning, 28 pound 4 ounce, not a bad start that, looking pretty good for another bite, because I have heard a few carp jumping out, so let's get this one back, but first carp for the trip, Creek Lakes 2024. A lovely common. After being woke up in the early hours of this morning by that 28 pound common, I still managed to get up bright and early to see if I could see any signs of any showing corp. It's always good to be back out on the bank, especially in France. At any time, the rods can go off and you could be into a real chunk. That's the first breakfast done and it was absolutely lovely. Go back to the peg now, get the rods out, see what happens through Sunday. It's been a pretty quiet afternoon. I've only seen one carp show all day and no liners, no action on the rods. Today seems to have gone really quick. Maybe it's just because I'm tired, but it's time to go down for tea. It's a Sunday beef roast. Sunday evening came and went, and so did Sunday night. I stayed up till about three o'clock in the morning expecting a run, but nothing happened. The bivy that you can see on the peg opposite is peg 18 where I'm actually set up so you're probably wondering why am I filming from around this side the reason I'm filming from this side is because I brought my rods round into peg 11 peg 11 is a bait boat swim only last night I didn't see a single carp show in front of peg 18 and I didn't have any indications no liners no runs or nothing to say that there was many carp in that area the wind has been blowing cold and I think they're on the back of it. The back of it in this case being Peg 11. I've ran the bait boat through the swim because as I mentioned, it's a bait boat swim only. And yes, showing plenty carp on the deeper. And the lake bed is also a lot clearer. It's mostly gravel down in front of Peg 11. So that should make the fishing a little bit easier as well. This is the warmest I've been since I've been here. It's a lot warmer around in Peg 11. And like I've said in a few videos before, if I'm cold and I don't like it, I can guarantee the carp are cold and they don't like it neither. I've got my brew, my coat's off, I'm warm and happy. Let's see what happens in the next few hours. And while I'm waiting for a run, I've got myself some mini chocolate donuts. And these are really good. I had three, there's only one left, I think it'd be a shame, just leave it in the bag, all on its own. I was going to take my time eating these donuts and make them last throughout the day, but I've ate them in less than three minutes. I soon settled into peg 11 and into my chair, and it wasn't long before I got very comfy and started to fall asleep, nodding on and off. A few showers crept in throughout the day, dull, overcast, slightly chilly. There's a real change in the weather compared to last week. Last week, it was over 20 degrees, warm and sunny. This week, down to barely 10 degrees in day and dropping down to low as one degree at night. The birds are busy singing away. The sun has been out a lot more today and it has been a little bit warmer, but there's no action to report. Going to go down for tea in about half an hour. And then after that, come back to peg 11, get the rods out again 
and fish here till it goes dark. I stayed down on peg 11 a couple of hours after tea, but sadly I didn't have any rewards. But while I was there, I did have a lot of time to do a lot of thinking about why I wasn't catching any carp. So what I've done is I've come up with another tactic that's always put me the carp on the bank. I'm using Solly PVA bags. And it seems that swapping onto the Solly PVA bags has worked out. Carp on the bank. It looks around the mid 20 pound mark. Let's get it on the scales and find out. 20, 24, 14. Very nice. Move back around into peg 18 for the night. Because it's quite weedy and the carp are held up in the weed, cast the solid PVA bag out. Result, 24 pound 14. Second carp of the trip. I'm gonna to stick to the solid PVA bags and keep putting them back in the weed. That's where the carp are. Landing this carp, making the rig change. I'm really pleased with myself to be honest. I was scratching my head, wondering what I was doing wrong. So a change in tactics there paid off. The four lights that you can see flashing on and off are the wind turbines in the distance. And I'm using the first one on the left as my marker. And I'm doing the same thing in the day. So as I know what line I've got to cast out on. And then that way, as long as I'm casting towards that flashing light, I know that the rig is landing in roughly the right spot every time. So a result there. Spent most of the day trying to figure out what I was doing wrong or what I could improve on. And obviously knowing that the carp were in the weed, it just made sense to fish PVA solid bags with crumbed boilies and a few small half boilies in there. And yeah, as you've seen, that paid off uh, £24.14. So through the night now, I am going to be using PVA solid bags for the rest of the session and see how it goes. But for now, I'm going to call it a night and get in bed. As I mentioned, in the early hours of the morning, the temperatures are dropping to low as one degree. About three and a half hours later, I was up and out my sleeping bag. Just gone three o'clock in the morning. What a fight. £36.4. Caught number three, taking on a solid PGA bag. Left rod again, doing the business. I think I've figured it out. Proper result. An eventful night, two carp landed. One at 24 and one at 36. Bloody freezing though, so on my way down to the lodge now, get some breakfast and a nice warm cup of tea. Okay, so the tactics I'm using, as I mentioned, are a solid PVA bag. You can't use pallets out here at Creek Lakes, they are banned. There's no pallets of any kind allowed. So I've crumbed up some essential sal boilies, some of the sal boilies I'm using as well, and got that inside a solid PVA bag and the hook bait is just a small odd shaped piece of sal boily that I found right at the bottom of the bag so it's not round I could have cut one down but that is ideal this is the left rod I'm casting out it's clipped up at 17 and a half wraps down to the margin on a nice gravel spot at the bottom of the shelf Put the bobbin on and turn the volume up. Get the other two rods out and we're rocking. As you've seen, the left rod is at 17 and a half wraps down the margin. The middle rod is at 17 and a half wraps towards the first two popular trees. And the right rod at 18 wraps towards the wind turbine. 
Quarter past two. Another run on the left rod. 23 pound. If you keep coming out at late hours in the night, it could make for a long week because we're not getting many bites in the day. So, see what happens though. Run times, definitely early mornings. Get this one back. That's a left rod wrapped up, clipped up, and back out on the margin spot at 17 and a half wraps. But now I'm awake, I'm awake. Once I'm up, I can't go back to sleep. I do find it difficult, so I'm going to stay up and have a brew. I'm glad I've got my cup of tea because it's absolutely freezing out here this week in France. I can't believe the weather change. I'm sitting out in it, but I'm persevering because I'm desperate to see if I can see any carp show or any signs, but it's looking pretty bleak at the moment. After spending several hours staring across the lake, there's not much showing in front of Peg 18. The majority of the carp seem to be held up in between 14, 15 and in front of 16. So maybe throughout the day, they might move along up into my swim. I'm certainly hoping so because after staying awake all night, I'm knackered and I'm going to get in my bed and try and grab an hour. When I woke up, I just happened to glance in the margin and there's a crayfish net there. I did see something inside it. It turned out there was a perch and a pike. The perch was about three pound and a little jack pike. I think the jack pike chased the perch into the net, thinking he was going to get an easy meal. 20 past four Thursday afternoon and the wind has finally changed in our favour. It's blowing this way now. So hopefully it's brought the carp along with it because it's been an extremely quiet 24 hours. The board's looking a lot different now compared to the start of the week. Lots of people have moved around, mostly off Lake 5. Lake 5 at the start of the week was absolutely rammed at the top end, but now they've spread out a bit more. I'm not in any rush to get back to the peg. I'm absolutely stuffed after eating all these breakfasts and evening meals. I'm full as an egg. I mean, to be honest, there's not a lot happening in the day, so there's no rush to get back. But anyway, all of the runs are coming through the night and hopefully I can get this sling wet again. Friday morning, down to the final 24 hours and I haven't had a carp on the bank now for 72 hours. It seems like a lifetime. Uh, the one night I do have an early night because I was absolutely mega tired. Charlie fishing in a couple of pegs down tells me that it's about three o'clock this morning. There was quite a few carp lumping out and showing directly in front of me and he was quite surprised that my rods hadn't gone off. Well, he was surprised, so was I, because the amount of effort I put in to try and catch him this week is phenomenal. Because there isn't much happening in my swim throughout the day, the majority of the runs are coming after 12 o'clock at night. I brought a couple of rods around to Lake 4 on Peg 31 and I'm going to try my luck here for a few hours. You never know. To maximise my chances on catching a carp, I ran the bait boat through the swim on the far margin. And yeah, there's a couple of carp there. The icons are not very big, but it is showing fish. So that's something go at. So that's where I put both of my rods. Taking a look back at how the week's gone. Now there's 38 anglers out here this week. And I always work it into statistics and percentages. Out of 38 anglers, there's usually about 10 anglers that do really well. That's playing the percentage game, because after all, 38 anglers can't have a red letter session. It's just not possible on any complex for everybody to do extremely well. But the lads that have done well, massive shout out to you guys. Chuff for you that you've had some of the massive big girls out. There's been several big girls out of Lake 2 at the beginning of the week. The first 24 hours were quite prolific. 360s coming out, followed by a few 50s. And then throughout the week, it slowed right down. But that's fishing. That's how it goes. The other thing I want to say is, the food this week has been absolutely excellent. I have struggled to finish a full plate at times, Big, vast improvement from last year's food. So shout out to all of the bailiffs that have done a fantastic job of looking after everybody out here this week.
Just before nine o'clock, I had a run, or at least I thought I did. I struck into it and there was nothing on it. Must have been a liner. So I've sent the rig out in the boat again. Which one's going to go off first? The left or the right? Going into dark, Lake Falls come alive. I can hear the carp jumping out. They're just not in front of me. They're in front of peg 28 and 29. And the double swims and the lads that have been fishing them have been doing extremely well. I've come back around to peg 18 again. I've got all three rods out now. Hopefully resting the swim in the day and not having no lines out. I'll put me a carp on the bank through the night. Another long day and I've got to get up again at half past five. Start packing the tackle away. Wouldn't believe it, the carp are literally boshing out just in front of me. Typical. Okay guys, so that's the end of the trip. I've tried really hard to put one last carp on the bank, but sadly nothing's happened. So let's take a quick look back at some of the stunning carp that have come out of Creek Lakes this week. We had this stunning 52 pound, two ounce, what a cracker followed by the 66 pound 11 ounce common. Now this was the reason I was fishing Lake 2. I was aiming for a PB common on this trip, but Lee beat me to it. Well done mate. Charlie with a new PB at 54 pound 4 ounce. Tony, 52 pound 12 ounce. And a stunning 62 pound 12 ounce. Well done mate, cracking fishing. Within one hour of having the rods out, Louis started off with a flyer, 51 pound 10 ounce. Through the week, that was followed up by a new PB at £52.6. ounce. Dan had a great week landing several carp throughout the session, landing a few good ones as well. An upper 40 at £48.10. ounce. It's always a great feeling when you catch a 50, and this one at £52.2, ounce, a new PB. Liam with a £33.11 11 ounce in a 35 5 Daz managed to have a few, and he's a great guy. If you squint, he almost looks like Danny Fairbrass. Tommy did well throughout the week, catching several good chunks, and the best one at £51.8. ounce. Now there was lots of good carp caught out of Creek Lakes this week, so sorry if I haven't mentioned you, or put your carp in the video. Catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Bedtime Stories, Carp Adventures.